The second leadership mantra is, I don't know. Do you remember the first slogan? It was, I am here. What am I here to do? I am here to take responsibility and solve problems. The first slogan, I am here, is easy to understand, but the second slogan, I don't know, is more difficult to comprehend and use. You may have the impression that great leaders know more than others, so to exercise leadership, you need to say, I know. This is reasonable, and I do not deny that exercising leadership requires saying, I know. However, I want to emphasize that exercising leadership also requires you to say, I don't know, at the appropriate time. This is something that many people overlook. When should leaders say, I don't know? There are mainly four situations. Facing technical problems The first situation is when you are facing a technical problem and you do not know the answer. An organization faces many technical problems, and leaders cannot know all the answers. For example, if you are a CEO and a subordinate asks you a financial question, you can respond by saying, I don't know the answer to this question, but the CFO does. You should ask the CFO. As I have mentioned before, solving technical problems relies on authority. Sometimes superiors are authoritative, and sometimes they are not. When they are not authoritative, do not pretend to know. In fact, the higher the level of leadership, the less likely they are to know specific technical problems. If you do not know, just say, I don't know, instead of pretending to know. This is a manifestation of leadership. Facing challenging problems earlier, I talked about the first situation where you do not know the answer, which is facing a technical problem. Now, I will talk about the second situation where you are facing a challenging problem and you do not know the answer. This situation is similar to the first one in that you do not know the answer, but there is a fundamental difference. For technical problems, you do not need to know the answer, and someone else in the organization can know it. However, when facing a challenging problem, other people in the organization may not know the answer, and you ultimately need to know the answer. However, even though you need to know the answer eventually, you need to start by saying, I don't know. You do not necessarily have to say it to others, but you need to say it to yourself at least. This is a challenging problem, and I do not know the answer yet. Psychologist Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory has a great influence on management. Maslow also said a famous quote, If you only have a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. This quote is also well known in management, but many people do not know it comes from Maslow. Your hammer is your expertise, your strengths, and your successful experiences. Because you are good at using a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. There is a saying, dying in the past success. Why? Because past success is a hammer, but today's problem may not be a nail. Therefore, when facing a challenging problem or a new problem, you need to say, I don't know. This problem may be a new problem, and I do not know the answer yet. The answer I know now may not be the correct answer. Discovering a superior solution. Earlier, we discussed two scenarios where one might say, I don't know. The first is when faced with a technical problem where one genuinely does not know the answer. The second is when confronted with a challenging problem, where one needs to let go of their past experiences and biases, and acknowledge that they do not know the answer. However, as a leader, it is important to mobilize people to solve difficult problems. To solve a problem, you ultimately need to come up with an answer. This is the third scenario where one might say, I don't know. When faced with a challenging problem, even if you have already come up with an answer, you still say, I don't know. Why is that? The reason is not difficult to understand. When faced with a problem, you cannot be certain that your answer is the best answer. You hope to hear different answers, so that you can discover a better solution or integrate various answers to create a better one. This is the third scenario where one might say, I don't know. You already have an answer, but you say, I don't know, to encourage your subordinates and others to share their answers first, 
in the hope of discovering a better solution. Empowering team members to assemble the answer themselves. There is also a fourth scenario. Even though you have an answer and firmly believe that your answer is the best one, and that your subordinates cannot come up with a better answer if they come to you and ask, How should we solve this problem? You still say, I don't know. Why is that? Think about it. You no longer expect them to come up with a better answer, but you still say you don't know. Why? Earlier, we defined leadership as mobilizing people to solve difficult problems. Ultimately, it is the people who will solve the problem, and they need to take action to change the status quo. You can tell them, this is how we need to change. Or you can let them figure out, this is how we need to change themselves. Which approach is more likely to motivate people to take action? Clearly, it is the latter. When your subordinates come to you and ask, How should we solve this problem? Even though you already have an answer and believe that it is the best one, you still respond by saying, Oh, this problem is too difficult. I haven't figured it out yet. Why don't we discuss it together and see if we can come up with a solution? You discuss it together and guide them to come up with an answer, which may be exactly the same as the one you thought of earlier. But because they went through the process of figuring it out themselves, they feel that it is their idea, or at least an idea they came up with together with you. They will understand the idea better, and more importantly, they will be more willing to implement it. There is a behavioral economist named Dan Ariely who coined the term IKEA effect. If you have ever bought IKEA furniture, you know that it often requires assembly. When you assemble it yourself, you have a stronger emotional attachment to it, even if it is a bit crooked. The IKEA effect refers to a product that you invest labor and emotion into, causing you to overvalue it and like it more. Does the IKEA effect apply to people's ideas? Studies have shown that you will like an idea more if you assemble it yourself. Therefore, if you want others to like an idea more and be more proactive in implementing it, the best way is not to tell them the idea, but to quietly provide some materials and let them assemble the idea themselves, so that they think it is their own idea. This is the fourth scenario where one might say, I don't know. You are not giving them a ready-made idea, but letting them assemble it themselves. They will understand the idea better, like it more, and be more willing to take action.